Over the years, I have experienced bad headphones, pretty good ones, and a very small number could be described as outstanding, working with every musical genre and without costing you a month's salary. You might observe that I'm using Hyperman headphones on a daily basis, and I'm not doing that because I'm a Hyperman fanboy, but because they offer me something that others couldn't quite replicate. Take the Hyperman Suzvara, for example, that I'm using with every headphone amplifier, with every DAC review on this channel. For me, those are not just headphones, but tools that help me dissect and hear everything. Over the years, I have observed that Hyperman puts a much higher accent on clarity and not so much on making you relax and go with the flow, but today I'll review a different headphone from their entire portfolio. I have no idea why I never tried the original Ananda. I thought that those should sound very similar to Aria and Edition XX, but boy, how wrong I was. And today I'll be trying the newest basically version, the Ananda Nano, which sells for $599, but is currently on sale, going for $499 US dollars. These don't have the usual Hyperman sound, and let's talk about that. While getting the standard Hyperman build quality, so uh, please don't expect a very striking design or uh, some bold material choices, because in truth, these are looking like Edition XS with a different paint job and with a better adjusting mechanism. These are quite lightweight by Planar Mafia standards, uh, coming at uh, 480 grams, and considering how big these uh, ear caps are, these are actually quite lightweight, and since I don't have lots of pressure around my ears or on top of my head, these are actually quite comfortable in long listening sessions. While their structure, yokes, cup holder and outer grills are made out of metal, their caps aren't and this feels like some sort of hard plastic and that's my only concern I have with them. No biggie, but you still need to know about this. They have one single detachable cable in the package, uh, terminated with a 3.5 mm jack. There's a headphone adapter to a quarter inch jack, suggesting that you can drive these with desktop and with portable devices alike. This cable is soft and flexible, it lacks microphonics and seems to have a decent quality, but it's nowhere near the quality third-party cable makers can offer. If you use balanced headphone amplifiers, then it would be nice to get a cable terminated with a 4-pin XLR jack for the best results. As for tech inside them, we are talking about open back planar headphones, uh, which use nanometer thickness diaphragms, which were inspired by the Hyperman Susvara, the most expensive model, so clearly you should expect the Hyperman clarity. These have uh, some of the biggest uh, drivers that Hyperman makes, so pretty much in line with the Aria Edition XS and HE1000, so you should expect a bigger sound than usual and a pretty good sound stage uh, for this price. Hyperman upgraded these with stealth magnets that are acoustically invisible, meaning that these are no longer interfering with the sound waves, getting a better directivity of the sound and less ear cap distortion. These have an impedance of 14 ohms and a sensitivity of 94 dB, I presume per 1 milliwatt of power, so these should be easy to drive even by some portable devices, but of course, for best results, I recommend a desktop headphone amplifier that should have a better control over their drivers. Having a weight of 419 grams, these are one of the lightest planar headphones that I have uh, experienced so far, and thanks to soft ear pads, I can wear them for at least two to three hours without getting uncomfortable. Usually I'm talking about headphone measurements and a few select comparisons at the very end of my videos, but uh, this time around I'll make an exception because uh, Ananda Nano has something to say, uh, even versus pricier headphones, even versus pricier Hyperman headphones. I have measured them in a quiet environment using a mini DSP ear system with original headphone compensation files, and this is how the Ananda Nano is looking versus its competition. Without a single doubt, these are delivering a strong sub bass, and if you look closely, their measurements are much closer to a pricier Ari Organic than to a similarly priced Edition XS. And once you start listening to music, you start realizing that indeed the sound is punchier than that of the Aria Organic, 
while slightly lowering the resolution and dynamic range. Now, look at this beautiful waterfall that combines frequency response with decay. We almost have a straight line in the frequency response with very few deviations from linearity and an amazing transit response and decay. This is a fast sounding headphone and swift shifts in terms of dynamics won't pose a problem at all. This can be smooth and relaxing, but also lightning fast and punching sounding with bass intensity tracks. And lastly, look at this beautiful spectrogram that tells the story of an incredible driver assembly without getting driver rattles in the bass region. I must say that in general, these are one of the nicest measurements that I took for any headphones at any price point. Sound wise, I dislike the fact that I needed to pay the premium Hyphaman tax if I wanted to get a more natural sound, a better flow, a more lifelike tonality. And I do believe their Suzvara is still the most natural headphone that Hyphaman has ever produced. Uh, being less picky in the treble compared to HE1000SE and having probably the nicest mid-range reedition that Hyphaman has ever produced. But I believe I found a headphone in their portfolio which costs 10 times less, uh, which provides a very similar tonality in terms of bass, mid-range and treble. This came as a shock because finally I could enjoy these even with some ultra linear setups like uh, headphone amplifiers that have THX, AAA tech, NFC amplifiers of topping and all of those SMSL devices. All of those worked actually quite great with these and finally these were fun, engaging and impactful even with such devices. With affordable Hyphaman headphones like Sundara for example, like Edition XS for example, you need to have usually a warmer sounding setup that boosts a little bit the mid-range and removes the glare from the upper treble. But that is no longer the case with the Ananda Nano because we have uh, quite possibly the punchiest bass that Hathaman has ever produced. At this price, for example, that is for sure. There is a lot more energy, there is a lot more punch in here compared to Edition XS, compared to Sundara as well. The bass hits like a maglev train. It's incredibly punchy, definitely punchier and stronger compared to Edition XS, compared to Sundara. The mid-range is still not on the same level with something like a ZMF or Meze headphone, but it's still warmer and more natural sounding in a way compared to Sundara, Edition XS and all of those headphones. And the treble doesn't bother me at all while retaining the half of clarity and extension. Using these massive drivers, which are similar to those of Aria and HE1000, you should expect a sound that envelops you fully. The bigger the amp that drives them, the more current and headroom it provides, the bigger the sound will be as well. I know that the soundstage is actually a controversial topic on plenty headphone brands out there, but it's no longer taboo on Hyphamans. Edition XS, Aria and HE1000, which are sounding quite big and enveloping. And I do believe that Ananda Nano is part of this brotherhood as well. At times, these will be mimicking the sound of a well-made near field stereo setup. And having these elongated drivers, uh, which are taking the shape of human ears, the sound is not just open and wide, but also very tall as well, which is actually quite interesting. So this won't challenge my loudspeakers, that is for sure, but at the same time, these are sounding bigger compared to Hyphaman Sundara, compared to Meze 109 Pro, compared to Mundro Venus. So I do believe the soundstage capabilities at this price point is actually quite outstanding. I also appreciate that we now have a decent depth to the sound, so I can uh, close my eyes and simply count how many steps I need to make until reaching the soloist or the rest of the band, improving the perception of sound depth. Hyphaman were always on top of their game in terms of clarity and resolution. That is not going to change today with the Ananda Nano. I mean, I don't know a single headphone at this price point, even pricer a little bit, that provides as much resolution and clarity. Be it Meze 109 Pro, Odyssey LCD2, my co-designed Apos Caspian, Erzetich Mania, Kinerton Valley, all of those are pricier, but at the same time, they cannot match the same resolution that is coming from the Ananda Nano. 
Next week, I'll be dropping my FIO K19 DACAM combo review. And I was comparing that one with K9 AKM. And with a few dynamic headphones, uh, the differences were not so clear to me. So the difference was there, but it was not a massive one. Uh, but with the Ananda Nano, I didn't have a shadow of doubt. Uh, clearly, there was a massive difference between them. So yes, uh, these can show you a difference between DACAM combos, DAC amplifiers and so on because their resolution and transparency is actually quite impressive for the price. I moved to portable devices and sure enough, I again heard the difference between them. So if you want to analyze your music, if you want to compare a few DAC amplifiers, dongles, DACAM combos, so on and so forth, then you can do that with the Ananda Nano pretty easily. I'm not sure if their amazing bass performance has anything to do with what I'm going to say or their higher sensitivity than usual through half on ranks, but these are providing an impressive bass slam and uh, they will surely make you smile while listening to some bass intensive tracks. Now, usually planar headphones then demand quite a lot of power. Uh, they need usually desktop headphone amplifiers to awake bass notes from their deep slumber, but I feel that is no longer needed with the Ananda Nano. I tried a few portable devices and they worked just fine with a FIO Q15, uh, with Shinelink H5, with FIO M23, with Hybe R8 Mark II, and uh, I didn't feel that they needed more power than that to awake them uh, and make them mean and punchy and impactful sounding. If fast and impactful transients are your cravings, then Ananda Nano will fully satisfy them. And besides incredible dynamics, these also have a fast response times. And if you enjoy lightning fast side trends, then you'll get fast decays and a much needed start and stop of the drivers. Going back to frequency response, subjectively speaking, the bass will be something that will be impressing you from the very first minutes. Not only it uh, easily reaches those 20 Hz notes, but also elevates them from the ground by around uh, 4 dB. So that slight roll off that Edition XS is having is no longer here. On the contrary, it's slightly elevated. So the bass punch feels uh, considerably stronger on the Anana Nano compared to Edition XS. It went from where's the kick on the Edition XS to please be gentle with my eardrums on Ananda Nano because the difference is actually quite immediate and that happens mostly due to a nicer kick in the bass that has an outstanding physicality to it. Heifman Suzvara has an outstanding mid-range performance. I do believe the best mid-range that Heifman has ever produced and sadly lower tiered Heifman creations were not so silky smooth or as organic sounding like the Suzvara. However, Ananda Nano changes that preconception a little bit. So these are not exactly Suzvara, that is for sure, but they are trying to mimic that kind of sound. So they are walking the same path. High finance in general are not regarded as having the most natural or organic mid-range renditions. But lately uh, with Ario Organic and now with the Ananda Nano, I believe that is slowly changing. So finally, we can have a little bit of magic happening in this region as well. Like all Heifman headphones, there is a small peak at around 8.5 kHz, which also happens to be our most sensitive part of our hearing. It goes up by around 4 to 5 dB, but that happens only in that tiny range of 8 and 9 kHz. So this is not a major concern. The treble is defined, it's clear, it's sometimes sharp sounding at the same time, but on the plus side, there are driver movements even past 16 kHz, something that is not happening very often uh, with headphones at this price point. I don't find them bright or edgy, and since we don't have nasty distortions building up, I kind of like this treble performance. Wrapping up, I know that subjectivity plays a major role uh, in everything that has to do with hi-fi reviews, but after listening to them for a few weeks and being surprised by how engaging and, dare I say, organic these sounded, I went ahead and measured them. Not only they deliver fast response times, fast decays, 
while keeping distortion at bay, but they also offered a close to perfect frequency response. I won't use big words, but if you like the Haifaman sound and want a higher fun factor out of your tunes, not only at home but also on the go thanks to a higher sensitivity than usual, then Haifaman and Under Nano becomes a no-brainer, a classic headphone that I can recommend. They recently lowered its price from $5.99 to $4.99 US dollars, and even if I still don't like these uh, plastic caps and their stock cable, it's a real challenge finding a match sound-wise. Alright guys, thanks for watching, please drop me a like and a subscribe if you like this video, and as usual, stay positive and open-minded, and I'll see you around!